Hello everyone and welcome to another webinar where uh, we will be showing you how to uh, get started with Inline Manual. My name is Mark Sotek. I'm the founder of Inline Manual. Uh, so I should be able to know basically most of the features of the Inline Manual. And uh, this webinar will take us around 30 to 40 minutes. We will see how that will go and as well, what kind of questions you might have at the end. And there is a chat box uh, on the left hand side uh, where you can send uh, uh, questions during our, uh, during our webinar, which we will answer at the end. And I think we are good to go. Uh, this webinar will be also recorded. So in case you will need to drop off uh, earlier, uh, then you will get the recording afterwards. Uh, although I think the, the most kind of like a value of the webinars are the questions at the end. So feel free to ask during the webinar. Um, so what I'm going to do is to share the screen with you. So just give me a second. Okay, you should be able to see my screen now. Uh, shout if you can't, I'll wait a little bit just so everyone can see our screens. And you should be able to see the first slide. I'll begin with uh, telling you a little bit about inline manual first. So uh, we have been working on inline manual since uh, 2012. So it's been a while. Uh, we released the official version in March 2014. So it has been tested uh, as well in the in the past two years, really. And uh, we have customers all around the world. Um, we are also kind of like a small company currently seven people and uh, we are also spread around the world so we are a fully remote company our main headquarters are london and prague so we are europe based that's also where our servers are uh, but we are planning to increase our uh, infrastructure and integrate it quite soon uh, to outside of just europe now uh, what uh, what we will start with is just briefly, like a brief overview of what it is inline manual for. Uh, then we will just quickly go through terminology and then we will jump into right into the creation of the content. So what is inline manual for mainly? Uh, first is the user onboarding. So that allows you to create uh, these onboarding tutorials uh, to increase the trial to paid plan conversions, for example. If you have, let's say, a free trials, you can easily convert them through in-app tutorials, uh, let's say for the first time users. You can also announce new features, which is very popular. So for example, when you release something new, you can just automatically launch a tutorial for the uh, users that haven't seen that tutorial yet or a message or uh, kind of like a step within the within your application uh, you can also increase the features adoption through this through the features of inline manual which is again uh, like automatic launch it a tutorial for a specific segment of users so let's say someone is using your application uh, for the past two months but they are not using a specific feature so let's say when they log in after these two months uh, they can get a tutorial saying look there's this feature that you are not using and we think you might benefit from that this is how we can set it up um, that's basically the same that what I was saying this engage users throughout their journey because the user onboarding is not just for the first time users, but you should have this like user onboarding patterns across their whole journey, no matter how long they are using your application. You can create the in-app alerts through the uh, inline manual features. So for example, uh, if you are updating uh, or if you have, uh, let's say, a webinar soon, you can launch this um, kind of like alert. And uh, target, you can target specific segments of users. So you can target, let's say, the new users, the, the users that are not using specific, specific features, uh, and so on. It's up to your imagination, really, based on the fields that you can send to inline manual. Then uh, it's not just for user onboarding, but also for the self-service, for the support, uh, where we are trying to basically 
uh, that's where our name is coming from like inline manual we are trying to do everything inline within the application so for example the current knowledge base of systems for example are all hosted somewhere else on a different platform on different websites so when the user wants to follow an article they have to actually go to that specific website and then they have to read it there come back to your application do something come back to that again uh, window with the self uh, with this knowledge base article and so on and what we are trying to do is to bring all of this experience inside into the application in line essentially so uh, what we allow you to do there is that you can provide help where needed through the contextual in-app tutorials that's what we call inline help um, because we have there like a widget that i will show you and that widget once it's expanded it shows the list of the tutorials that are contextual so meaning relevant to the page where the user is currently so we can highlight specific tutorials and put them on top of the list uh, then again we want to keep the users within the application which is possible through this approach uh, it's a full learning by doing experience so basically the users or the tutorials that we are creating are actually interactive in a way that the user is following the the actions or whatever you tell the user to do let's say click here do this do that so they are interacting with the application itself so for example if there is an um, a tutorial that will be let's say how to create an invoice that uh, the user should end up with an invoice being created whilst they are reading and following that tutorial so they are really clicking on buttons they are interacting with that and it works as a kind of like a new layer on top of your application. So these are the main areas of inline menu, how it can be used. So hopefully one of them is, is yours, or you can later, let's say you can start with a self-service, then go to the user onboarding, try there, whether it will increase, let's say your attention or decrease the, the user churn and so on. Now, uh, let's go to the terminology that we will be using because we are using some uh, terms that are not that very common. Uh, so the first one is topic and the topic means it's basically it's a content unit within inline manual uh, the topic can be an example a walkthrough uh, which is set of uh, so that's this like step by step uh, tutorials uh, then it can be a uh, tool tips uh, which is a set of tool tips uh, like these little question mark icons across your application when the user clicks on that it will show a tool tip uh, telling them what it is or what a certain part of a site is and then uh, we have also redirect topic type uh, which is basically just a link to an external resource and we have also article topic type which is a um, knowledge based article right within the widget within the widget uh, so the topic is really like a content content unit in in our world in the inline menu it's like a broader term that we are using uh, then we have a site. A site is basically, uh, so that represents um, uh, or your application. So it's you can think of it as a kind of like a folder where you are assigning topics. Uh, what is interesting about our system is that when you create one topic, let's say one of these walkthroughs, uh, you can have multiple sites within inline menu. So you can have, let's say, production and development site. And you can then assign uh, the very same topic to both of these sites. So you can have, let's say, this very same walkthrough uh, uh, topic on, on a production and development site. And then you can have different releases, different versions of this topic assigned to these like production and development site. And that allows you to basically continue editing this topic on a uh, development site where on production side you can say give me always specific release of that topic so you are not changing it whilst it's live and then you can basically uh, update the release wherever whenever you want then we have a player and player is um, uh, the functionality that the end users will end up seeing so it's the it's the widget it's the uh, it's the steps uh, it's the basically whatever the end user is going to see uh, the authoring tool, that's the tool that allows you to create these tutorials, which we will install. And then the portal, the inlinemanual.com portal, is a, uh, is a uh, basically a central place where all, these, like, all this content is being stored, where you can collaborate, where you can manage the releases and deployment, where, where you can see the analytics and people tracking and things like that. Um, that's about the terminology, and I think right now we can 
jump right into the uh, authoring tool or basically what will happen once you sign up and what what are your next steps so i'm going to switch to the inline manual portal i'm already logged in as a user and you should end up in your, after your first time sign in on this page which is like a getting started with inline manual page here like the second instructions are um telling to uh, or saying to install the authoring tool so once you click on this authoring tool it will take you to the chrome app store now uh, you need to have the Chrome browser installed uh, because that's where this uh, extension works only. And this is only for the authors, for those who want to create these tutorials. Your users won't need to do anything. I mean, the end users who are going just to consume these tutorials or see these tutorials on your site. So what I'm going to do is to add this to Chrome. So I'm just going to add an extension and once this is done you can see the extension here in the top right corner so what it allows me to do is basically visit any website and then just click on that and it will enable the authoring tool there and i can start creating these topics for for that specific application so i can close this one and then i can visit my own page here okay so this is our actually demo application here and uh here I want to create these tutorials. There is no player installed yet uh, in this application. So basically I can click here on this authoring tool and it will bring up the authoring tool there. Let me just skip this. Let me just go back to where you would start. So this is what you will uh, see when you first time enable the authoring tool. We are in a context of a site. So we, don't, we haven't created any site here yet. So we can create a site so that's basically, like I mentioned before, it's a folder. Then you have to enter the URL of the site. Uh, basically, it can be anything you want because we are not checking the URL. So um, you can use it then on the subdomain. It depends where you want to you know, install the player. Uh, and yeah, so enter there whatever you want. Enter the description. Uh, so that will be webinar test, for example. And we will create a site. So essentially now we created this folder where we are going to add these uh, topics. So now we have like a blank canvas here. So we are going to create a topic. So I'm going to create a topic. And here we can see the four types that um, I mentioned at the beginning that we can have the walkthrough, tooltips, article, and redirect. So we will create a walkthrough topic type. And um, let me just create, click on the create topic. And here, once we created the topic, uh, you can see also it read there that it has been assigned to a site. So for example, if I go back to the inline manual portal, click here on the sites, create it. If I click into that, there you can see that there is this walkthrough test topic that we just created. I have some more, uh, topics here that I have created before our webinar, just to show you later how it looks like. But to give you an idea how it works, uh, when I was talking about this, about a site as a folder, is that I can basically remove this topic from the site here. So now this, uh, this site doesn't have any topics there, but I can edit again. So I'm not deleting it, I'm just reassigning it or removing the assignment. So if I add it back, it will be there for the end users. So that, that means that you can reuse the content on multiple sites, for example, on multiple applications if it applies and give them, let's say, different releases, different version, hence the deployment, like the production and development site. So let me go back to the application. And we are here on a sign-in page. So what we are going to do here is that uh, we are basically going to uh, introduce the user to the sign-in process. And uh, that will be a very short tutorial uh, but we will show there like a features of inline menu. So I'm going to add a new step. So that's a first step of this, uh, of this uh, walkthrough. And uh, here we will basically welcome the user to this application. And what we can do there is uh, choose a step template. So we have some predefined step templates here. So we will use this one top image and text, which will look like this one. 
And here you can, through the editor here, you can remove or replace the images. It's up to you. The content is in your hands. So I can, let's say, type here, welcome. Then the preview will be available here. And if you want to do some more customized um, or more even custom customizations through the HTML code, you can switch to the source. So we were trying to, to make the inline manual, um, you know, like a tool that allows you to do these kind of things without any coding, but we still kept the flexibility for the developers or for, for people who have more skills in code to, to extend it further. So here we have this welcome message. And the next thing that we need to do is to find out a way or tell the user how to actually move to the next step, to the second step, which we will create later. And for that, we have triggers. And triggers can be found here below the step templates. And we have there, for example, click, click trigger, next button, hover over, and so on. And here we will choose the next button. So it will show the next button here and it will allow the user to move to the next step when they will click this next button. So we have a way for the user to move to the next step. That's fine. And what we can add here to make this kind of like a step prominent or more kind of like visible for the end user, we can enable the backdrop effect. So if I enable the backdrop effect, you can see that there's this overlay right now behind this, which is like a, a default color of this um, of this uh, backdrop here, but you can override it per step as well. So if I click here on override, I can then choose a color. So let's say here we will use, let's say white. So I can choose it like this and then you can change the opacity as well. So I can change it to this one, for example. And now we can see that uh, this is more prominent right now, but also the user can actually um, interact with the with the overlaid application. So basically, I can't click on any buttons here or do anything else there. The only option I can do here is either click next button or click here on this close button there. So that's our first step. Then we can add another step. So we are going to add a second step here. And what we want to instruct the user to do is to um, basically click on this or fill in the email address. Right, so we can have here instructions. Click here to enter your email address. Again, the preview you will see here right away. And uh, now what we want to do is to assign this step to this particular element, to this email address field. So what I can do now is I can click on this assign element button. If I click on that, the authoring tool collapse. And now it allows me to hover over our application where you can see it's highlighting specific elements, elements that we can target. So I want this email address. So I click and it will automatically attach itself to that element. We can also position it relatively to that element. So for example, here we want to point it from the left like that. And uh, then again, we need to apply some triggers. So how will the user move to the next step? So here we will use the click trigger, meaning that the player will be waiting for the user to click into this field to move to the next step. Now we want to do the same for the password field. So what we will do is that we will duplicate a step number two. We can just change the title to step three. And we want to point it at the password field so we can assign element and hover over the password click and it will be assigned it. And then we can, or we should remove the email address and type in password. So click here to enter your password. And the trigger, we can either leave this click trigger or we can try a different one. So for example, here we have the, the input trigger, meaning that it will advance to the next step when the user will start typing into this field. And then, uh, so we have now three steps and we can add the last step here, which will essentially be assigned to the sign in button like that. We can point it from the bottom so it doesn't cover any parts of our user interface. And let's say, click here to sign in. And we will use the click trigger. So it will basically finish the tutorial when the user will click on that sign in button. And that's it. And we created our first tutorial. Now within the authoring tool, what you can do, you can save your changes. So that will be sent to our portal. 
And now we can also preview it. So here at the bottom, you can see that there's either preview step or preview topic. So if you do some changes and there is no uh, live preview, then you can click on the preview step and basically it will just update the preview, this one. Or if you want to start playing the tutorial, you can click on the preview topic. And this will be starting from the very first step. If you are, for example, further in the process and you are uh, testing different steps and so on, you can click on a play button next to the step itself. So here it will start, let's say from the third step or here it will start from the second step. But we here want to play it from the very beginning. So I'm going to click on the preview topic here and this is what the end user will end up seeing. So here you can see, okay, it's a welcome message and then we can click on the next button here to advance to the next step. We see that there are four steps, so three more. And I'm going to click on next button here. Now it's telling us click here to enter your email address. So if I click into that, you can see how it advanced to the next step. So I can type here. Then it tells us click here to enter your password. So if I click into this, you can see nothing happened because we put in there this input trigger, meaning that it will advance to the next step when we actually start typing inside into this step. So if I start typing, you can see it moved to the next step and now it's waiting for us to click on the sign in button and you can see it uh, ended the, the whole topic. And uh, that's it, we created our first tutorial. Now let me just save that. Okay, we saved everything. And uh, right now what you want to do is to implement the player once you, once you are done with this, you can implement the player into your application. So I'm going to disable the authoring tool. If I refresh, you see nothing is there, no player there. So when it comes to the in implementation of the player, you can go back to your site at the inline menu uh, portal, you can then click on the settings page and then go to the player installation. And here is the one line code that you need to copy, uh, either send it to your developer or uh, insert it into, let's say, a footer or a header of your application. So here we have um, a source code of my application. So what I'm going to do is to edit at the end of the page, paste the code here, save, go back to my application here and just refresh. And this is my, uh, my player. If I click on that, this is the walkthrough that we just created. So if I click on the walkthrough test, this is what we are just previewing. So if I click next, you see this is guiding us through the whole process. Okay, so the player is now there. Now, what you can do with the site settings itself is that you can change the appearance in the player appearance here. So for example, we can change the popover. We can change the background color of the popover itself. So for example, we can change it to what would be a good color where whatever here. So let's choose to this one. Then you can change the text color to be, let's try something just like this. And you can also change the border color and so on and all the other different options. And then when you save it, the uh, it takes about a few seconds to just update the, the player itself. So for example, if I go back here and just refresh here and enable the walkthrough, you can see it's got the new styling already, okay? So it, it happens on the fly, essentially. Now, further there, we have uh, a lot of other options uh, that you can tweak the colors and so on, but also if you want to change the colors specifically, let's say make your own designs, make your own CSS, uh, which is a little bit more advanced uh, customization, you can do it as well. So again, we are trying to keep the inline manual flexible as, as much as possible. Now, let me just go uh, to uh, player languages here. So also the inline menu is fully multilingual, so we can have different languages and you can also translate the user interface. So for example, if I add an English translation here, I can change the widget title, let's say to need help like this and I can save it. You can, here you can change the previews or next button, you know, the, the wording there, and you can change it for every language or language you might have. So if I go back to my application now and just refresh, you can see the, the button change to need help. On that page, uh, on the, sorry, on the player appearance page, 
within the widget section, you can also change the background color of the widget. So let's say, let's try to change it to something, uh, let's say this, and then you can also position it somewhere else. So let's say I can position it to top right and save. And if I go now back to my application, refresh the screen, it's now visible here and there's, it's a purple and need help text appearing. If I click on that, it will show me the, the widget uh, with the list of the tutorials I can play. Okay. So uh, that's this and um, further to the editing. So uh, I just show you how we can implement it. And there are a lot of uh, features within inline manual. We, like I mentioned, we have been building this for the three and a half, three and a half years so there is a lot to cover uh, so you can always explore and you can whenever you reach something you can click on this what what is this section and just click on that it will take you to the help portal but a few things i would like to show you so if i add a new step and uh, what i can do is here within the elements i can assign multiple elements to one step so for example if i want to assign this to this step let me just enable the backdrop so you can clearly see that. So this is the first element that I just assigned, but I can assign another one. So let's say I want to highlight as well this button. I want to highlight the email address field. I want to highlight as well the sign in button here. Okay, so you can see how we can highlight multiple elements here. And the same you can do for the triggers. So the triggers again allows you to advance to the next step based on the user interaction. So for example, in this case, what if I want the user to continue to the next step when they will click on this button or this button? So here I can add multiple triggers. So I can choose the click trigger, edit and select the element to which it will apply. So now it's waiting for the user to click on the view docs button. But I want this as well for the sign in button so I can add a click trigger and assign it to the sign in button here. So now the player is waiting for the user to click this or that and it will move to the next step. Okay, and here you can see all our triggers that we have there. So it's a click, next, mouse over, focus, blur, key press, change, refresh, and then also drag and drop. Uh, these drag and drop functionalities or triggers work only with the native HTML drag and drop. It, it won't work with the, these, let's say, jQuery draggables and, and so on. Okay, so that's this one. Uh, then each of these steps uh, can have its own launcher, which is uh, quite useful as well. Uh, I'm going to uh, show you a little example how it might look like. So for example, the launcher is essentially this little icon this, with the question mark. Again, you can customize it. You can change the title or the text in there. You can change the colors on the site settings or give it your own class and change it through the CSS. Uh, you can make it pulsing, for example. So uh, this is in our flow, let's say, uh, Let's say this is like the first step of this, like a form. So we can, uh, what we can do is change the content to make it one. We set it to visibility always, so it will be always displayed, but actually let's set it to active. So it will be displayed only when this topic is active. And then we can do the same for the third step, uh, but instead we will say, okay, active and change the content to be number two and uh, First step, we will set it to number three and set it to active like that. Now what the user can do is that they can click any of these launchers and it will jump to a specific step. So it's one of the ways how you can enable the users to actually launch a specific topic here or a specific topic on a specific step. If you want to launch a specific topic always on the first step, you can use the topic launcher here. So if I click on the topic launcher, I can set the visibility to, to let's say inactive. So this launcher will show only when the topic is not playing. I can assign elements. So for example, let's assign it to this whole form and you can see it here. And then let's say just change the content to T. So it means like it will be, it will launch the topic so we can distinguish it right now. So now this topic has this launcher and what will happen when the user clicks on that? You can see it launched the first step but also you can see these other launchers appear right now because they are set to be visible on active, meaning 
that they are visible when the topic is active when it's playing. And if I disable it, you can see it's removed uh, or it um, has been removed and the topic launcher again appeared here. So these are the launchers. Uh, the similar way is the or the similar way works the tooltips, but the tooltips have, have a different work, uh, workflow, but the functionality is almost the same. What is interesting about these launchers, you can specify a context path where you can say on what specific pages this launcher should display. Uh, this way you can have for each of your topic a different topic launcher or a, like a, each of your topic can have its own topic launcher, but they will display uh, or it will be displayed on a different path and you can always have it on one place. So if the user visits another page, there will be a different topic. They can click on that and it will launch it. And again, I can save it. Okay, so uh, if you are, or if you have a, develop, a developer's background, or if there are some features that you are, will be missing from inline menu, let's say um, uh, scroll to a specific element or do some fun, fancy stuff, we have their callbacks, which allows you to call a JavaScript function, uh, which has a specific callbacks, uh, callbacks uh, format. And basically it allows you to create specific functions for your authors, for the content editors, and they can also then pass parameters to it here. So they don't have to work with the JavaScript once you set it up. So you can freely extend basically the inline manual capabilities. And uh, I think we already saved this. And this is basically how we can create these tutorials. Uh, and I also promised you that uh, I will show you um, more topic types. So if I go back here to our site, uh, I have here these uh, three topics prepared. So one is the article topic. So if I add it to the site, redirect topic and two tips test. Uh, actually, let me remove the walkthrough and add there this tooltip test. Okay. And now if I go back to my application, remove the authoring tool, refresh, and nothing is happening. Why is that? Okay, so that's not supposed, I think, because we are using the alt. So let's try this. How about now? Okay, so if I expand this uh, this button here, you can see that there is now article topic. And just to show you uh, what the article topic is, if I click on that, it will show basically the knowledge base article within the widget. So the user doesn't have to go to external page, read it there and do something, but they can actually read the instructions whilst they are on the application and whilst they are interacting with the application. And let me just jump to uh, to show you one more, which is the redirect topic. And let me just reload the page. Okay, that might be causing problems because it's probably the old one. Okay, so let's try the tooltips. What it will do here. Okay, and here you can see the tooltips. This is the launcher, so if I click on that, it will show the tooltips there like this and the user can interact with them. Okay. And because that redirect topic wasn't working, I can just quickly show you how it looks like. So I can create a new one redirect, let's say redirect topic and create topic here. And let's say you put in HTTP google.com. Hopefully this will be working. If not, you will see. Okay, and now if I refresh, open up here, then here we can see that there is this redirect topic. If the user clicks on that, it will take us to a Google page because we set it to redirect to the Google page. So we can have there as well like external, external uh, topics or external links uh, and so on. Okay, so that's in a nutshell really how you can create these tutorials how to get started hopefully this will give you enough uh, kind of like a starting point uh, and you will be able to create your own topics right now then um it's right now when you should start thinking about any questions so if you have any questions feel free to ask in the in the uh, in the chat box there and uh, just to uh, point out the key features of inline manual so we are trying to make it know uh, that you don't need any coding, uh, but it is still very flexible as you might have seen for developers to extend it either through the callbacks 
which are the step callbacks or player callbacks or if you want to create some really specific uh, let's say styling you can completely customize it as you wish uh, there is a, a video on our own uh, site when you go there and click on the to play the uh, the tutorial the first tutorial then there is a video of a, what our client Freshdesk did or you can see it in the latest newsletter and it's really nice what you can do uh, very flexible essentially uh, it's very easy as well to update these tutorials so basically whenever something changes within your application you can go back to your application enable the authoring tool uh, look up your topic essentially so let's say we have here the walkthrough test go in there and then change it so let's say you can change it to welcome or you can change it to hi and and then save it and then it will be within seconds it will be propagated to your site well depends on your deployment process but uh, that that is the idea so it's very easy to 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 make it uh, to make changes to to all of these tutorials it's different than for example when you are creating these guides where you are creating screenshots and so on where if you create a screenshot it will get outdated you have to recreate all these screenshots but usually with inline menu if there are no drastic changes in the HTML markup of your application it will still work no matter whether they will move the, the elements around and so on uh, so that's that uh, then uh, we have there also analytics and people tracking so we allow you to uh, to show you uh, how or what is the performance of, of a specific walkthrough topic so we can optimize it for the user onboarding with these drop of funnels then uh, we have segmentation which allows you to target specific uh, users for example specific groups of users let's say you can show specific topics for administrators or editors because not everyone will have the very same set of uh, permissions for example then we have auto launchers which allows you to launch automatically a topic so for example like i mentioned before when you have a first time users you can set it up again in in the inline menu you don't need your developers but at the in the inline menu interface you can set up the auto launcher and make it make it launch for a first time users or a user that is not using specific uh, specific uh, feature and so on depends on the values that you are sending to us and then we have there also like a version control system behind us and deployment deployment management which means that you can go back and forth in the history of the tutorial of a specific topic because whenever you save it through the authoring tool it will create a new revision uh, so that allows you to create these releases on top of the revisions right um one more feature that i wanted to show you actually uh, that we that we released just like recently uh yesterday actually uh, is the uh, the variables uh, and what we allow you to do is to personalize as well these uh, these topics just like when you are creating let's say an email campaign uh, you can now uh, personalize these walkthroughs and basically here in the editor if you click here on this t icon which is a token you can then insert values that you are sending to us so for example if you want to display here a username and have a default value there so it will be replaced with that then the content itself will be will look like this but at the end if you have the values enabled in the in the uh, player implementation then you will see uh, or the user will end up seeing their specific personalized message essentially uh, which we think is, is very nice. We did some testing with our customers and it actually, in some cases, it increased the, uh, the, the walkthrough usage and as well some adoption by 10 to 15%, which is a simple, simple change really. Okay, uh, so that's about it. And uh, I think it's time for the questions. So let me check if there are any questions. So I'll stop sharing the screen and uh we have there are a few questions so one of the question is uh what if people use keyboard shortcuts tap to navigate between fields instead of clicking so we have there as well uh, or you can in this case you can create a combination of the of the triggers or you can have there just one trigger which will be a focus trigger and uh the focus trigger basically will be triggered when the user will uh, either click into the form or basically when the form field will become active so however they will get there meaning if they will uh, click on that uh, through the email or if the let's say javascript function will get there or if the if they will use the tab the the 
uh, the focus trigger in that uh, way uh, will work. Okay, another question. Uh, now, all the steps is on the same page, but what if I have next step after logged in? Uh, that's absolutely fine because we allow you, uh, basically the, what inline manual does by default is that it's uh, not path dependent. So uh, if you, uh, if there is a workflow where the user clicks on a sign in button, they click on that and your application is actually going to redirect the user, right? So uh, the inline menu doesn't have to do anything. If you put there on this button a trigger, uh, move to the next step when the user clicks on that trigger, it will automatically advance to the next step. So we know that we should trigger the next step. The the page that is triggered by the sign in button will load and the next button will or next step will appear. So so that's the workflow. So you can make it across multiple pages as well. And it's up to you whether you want to decide that uh, either you will direct uh, which page they will visit next. Uh, because we have there within the each step can have its own path, meaning, uh, or you can use this path, for example, for the first step where you say, okay, the path of this step is dashboard. And when someone will launch this topic um, through, let's say, the widget or in another, another way, then the first thing that the player will do is it will check whether the user is on a dashboard page. If not, they will be redirected there. So it will kind of like ensure that they will start on a specific page. But if you leave if you leave this uh, path uh, empty, then it will just uh, you know uh, follow the user basically. Okay, then we have another question about multilingual. Uh, so uh, whether the uh, whether the uh, tutorials can be multilingual and how does it work? How does it detect the language? So how does it work? Is um, you have to tell inline manual what kind of like or what is the language of the currently logged in user we didn't want to keep it uh, to let's say browser detection and stuff like that we had some issues with that previously in the past so we we abandoned that um, that approach and instead we we let you as a uh, application owner decide what language should the player use and it's done by just like one line uh, of code and uh, basically your application is deciding what language the user is using. And then the player will filter out specific to that language uh, or that is not matching that language and the user will see only these languages. Okay, um, so I think that's about it. Uh, we, we covered uh, all those 45 minutes. If you have any more questions, feel free to get in touch. Uh, we also do um, uh, a kind of like a one-on-one, one-on-one um, one -on -one, um, calls. So if you have some specific questions related to your application or any further questions, feel free to get in touch and we will be happy to schedule something and go through your specific requirements. And, um, all the other questions that uh, that uh, are in there, uh, we will try to answer via via email. Uh, so, yeah, that's that's all from us. Uh, get in touch if there is anything, and uh, looking forward to what you are going to create with Inline Manual. Have a great rest of the day, and see you.